You're listening to Change Your POV Podcast, episode 24. Uh, she started having seizures and needs a seizure dog. So we raised, oh, wow. she had to raise like $7,000 and she gave the money for that part to, to her. So That's crazy. Yeah. How do you, how do you train a dog to have seizures? Well, to, to, it's a, I'm just, I'm just smartness. kidding. Man. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you get tired. You just start, <laughs> start rolling with it. You're like, yeah, so I was going to figure out how to explain this fucking thing. <laughs> All right, oh, all right. Oh, well, all right, next question. Welcome to Change Your POV Podcast, helping you navigate transitions in your life, like entering and exiting college or the military, changing jobs or careers, and providing you with the coaching and mentorship needed to help you advance in your personal or professional life. Sometimes all you need is to change your point of view. Now, here's your host, Eddie Lazary. Hello, folks. This is your host, Eddie Lazary. Today, I bring you a special episode. This is the Valentine's special edition episode where Bennett and I, we uh, had a call to action out to our listeners and asked them to send us some questions and we'd be happy to answer them and you guys answer the call. I hope you enjoy this special edition. I know Bennett and I had a lot of fun. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another episode of Change Your POV Podcast. I am your host, Eddie Lazary, and again today I have with me my better half, Bennett Tanton, all the way from, I I forget what state you live in. Dover, Delaware. Dover, Delaware. I live, I actually live on Dover Air Force Base, which is kind of a somber place for some people, but. Hey. It is. Isn't that where all the uh, KIA fly into? Mortuary Affairs is, yes. Uh, so we could talk about that in a minute, but yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. So Dover. Dover what state again? Do- <laughs> Delaware. Because yeah. so, there is a Dover, New Hampshire, too. Is Yeah, yeah, there is. There is a Dover, New Hampshire, yeah. Delaware. Is so a... Dover, Delaware. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, before I we before we get into the shenanigans that is the episode today. I would like to announce for the first time here on air that Change Your POV officially has its its first sponsor. Yay. Everybody's clapping. I can hear it in the background. That's awesome. So so today's sponsor. Now, this is the first time I'm reading uh, I'm reading this sponsor spot. So I'm gonna try to make it sound unrehearsed and un like like I'm actually reading it, which I actually am. So here we go. Are we ready? And, and I'm sure the more I do this, the better I will get course, as well. Of course. So today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash change your POV. Over 180,000 titles to choose from. For your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player, whatever you use to listen to things on. Uh, so this is the way it works. This isn't part of the read. The, the script ended, but I'm going to explain it to you in like layman's terms how this works. So you go to this site, audibletrial.com forward slash change your POV, all one word. And once you're there, you can sign up and you can get free 30-day trial. And what's really cool about this is it should also give you like a free, like a token, like a free book. So you can actually get like your first free download to, to read whatever you got. Right. So I I got this. I use, and the reason why I wanted audible.com to be a sponsor is because I, I like to read books, but I found myself like so busy and, you know, I drive an hour to work. I work eight hours. I drive an hour home. And then a lot of times, I mean, I just recently graduated my master's degree about a year ago. So I was like a full-time student. And of course I'm married and I've got two kids and, you know, the kids were involved with sports and after school activities and on and on and on and on and on. So I really just kind of, I, I never was able to catch up on any of my reading. And, you know, I read a lot of things for educational purposes, 
but I read a lot of like just entertainment stuff. And I, I call it entertainment, but it's really like um, I'm not really big into nonfiction. I like fiction. I mean, um, <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm not big into fiction. I like nonfiction, but I like military nonfiction stuff like, you know, the like Black Hawk Down and, and a bunch of I got a ton of books. So what I did was I heard about audible.com and I was familiar with the concept. You go on, you pay a monthly subscription fee and then you can, you know, get these books. So what I, what I do is I pay my, I think it's 14 something dollars a month. Fourteen ninety five. Yeah. fourteen ninety five a month. And every month you get a, a token. And I think it, I get it like the 25th of every month I get a new token. And what that token is, you can pretty much use that token to, to download any book. Yeah. That, that you want in their entire catalog. And it's a very extensive catalog. So what I'll do is like throughout the month while I'm listening to a book and before I get my next token, I'll like still scroll through and look at like different books or if somebody recommends me a book, I'll go on there and I'll actually tag it as like a favorite. Put it on, so I don't put it on the wish list, baby. Yeah. On the wish list. Yeah. So I don't forget about it. And then, you know, when I, and, and this is what I do because I'm paying 1495 a month. I won't use my token for a book that's less that that's under fourteen bucks. So anything that's under fourteen bucks, I'll just pay for it. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but if it's fourteen dollars or greater, and oftentimes the books that I read are like you know twenty, thirty, forty bucks a piece. Yeah. I'll use my my token to buy those. Correct. Books. So and you can save like if you for whatever reason you're taking a long time reading a book or listening to a book for. You know your your bit your work schedule whatever you just don't you don't have an opportunity to to listen to a book for the entire month you can actually save up I think up to as many as six tokens so you can save up basically you know six free books worth of tokens um, before you start losing your tokens so it's really actually kind of really really cool so I got a ton of books on my library that I've read and I've got a few that are kind of in the backlog that I've been that I'm waiting to read. So um, the, the book that I just got done, I, I say reading, but you're not really reading it. You're listening to it uh, was um, art of war. Um, and that was a book that I, I bought the hard copy and I really wanted to, to read it. And I actually started to read it, but art of war is, is such a, I don't know. Have you ever read that book yet, Bennett? Yeah. Few times. So art. Of, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of those books where you like, you know, it isn't a one and done. You read it. No, over and over. yeah, you read it over and over again. But one thing that I struggle with act reading it myself is it's so thought provoking that I found it difficult to actually physically read it. But once I downloaded on Audible and I started listening to it, I could just like I listen to a section of it and I can pause and I can kind of take it in, internalize it, even rewind it, listen to it again. And I just found it very easy. It was much easier for me to consume it that way yeah. than actually reading it. Yeah, so absolutely. So and like I said, I got an hour commute to work, an hour commute back home. So I use that time um, to to listen to listen to books. It's it, it's really really so awesome. If I'm not listening to podcasts, I listen to books. So right, and that's that's me too. The last yep. the last three books actually that I've read or that I <laughs> I listened to were. Uh, I listened to the four hour work week, but mm. again, yep. I've listened to that a couple of times, uh, by Tim Ferriss. Yep. Uh, then, um, Oh God. What's the one by Napoleon Hill? Uh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, Jesus. How did uh, I not crush it? Crush it. No, by, no, uh, no, 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 Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, um Something and grow rich. Oh, it's not rich dad, poor dad. Is no. It? That's, no, that's that's Robert K- Kiyosaki. Kiyosaki. Oh my God, how do I how do I not know this? Um, I can hear you typing it. Yeah, right now. exactly. <laughs> because this shit's pissing me off. Think and grow rich. That's it. I, I didn't even Think I didn't it. even get there, but I got it in my head. So think and grow rich. It's like a freaking, you know, yeah. Uh, it is a classic of, you know, any of that stuff. And I mean, this is book was written shit. I don't even know years and years and years and years ago. And then yeah. the last book that I actually just got done listening to like two days ago was team of teams by general Stanley McChrystal. Mm, crystal. Yeah. That was a great book. 
Yeah. Is it like an autobiography or? Uh, no, I mean, it's a leadership book, really. Uh, oh, okay. At the end of the day. I mean, he's got another book called uh, My Share of the Task, which mm -hmm. is a memoir, like a memoir. Right. But uh, uh, Team of Teams is like, you know, Team of Teams, new rules of engagement for a complex world. And if you yeah. haven't read it, read it. Yeah. It's great. I mean, that dude, That's that awesome. dude's a freaking stud. Yeah, stud. He's, he's dumb. He man. really is. <laughs> he really freaking was. And I knew, I, you know, I know a couple of guys that actually know him and really, uh, they're just like this dude's he is, he's like the general, he's like a soldier's general, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And they don't, yeah, they don't, they don't make them like that all the time. No. Sure. Yeah. Not even close. So yeah. All right, cool. So, uh, so welcome to our, um, our sponsor. So it's audible.com. And again, Go and grab your free book. Your free book. Your free book download today, and uh, your 30 days a uh, free trial at uh, audibletrial.com forward slash change your POV all one word. Cool. All right. So this episode, along with having our first sponsor, we're also going to do something a little bit different. So on my way to work this morning, I had an epiphany, and I was thinking to myself, you know, what would be really cool would be to kind of kick out a call to action to all the listeners out there in, in both my network and Bennett's yeah, you network. Yeah, you texted me at like 7 this morning. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was on the I was, road too. I was on the road and I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> and so the so the call to action was this. Um, actually, yeah, let me let me read it so you can uh, – I, I got on my phone here so you can kind of check it out. I said uh, – this is us uh, just – ranting away on holy the, crap uh, that was a long conversation <laughs> uh there's a bunch of other stuff on here too like, i saying the thing about weed in uh new hampshire yeah i think that's just uh legalized though right yeah it's, it's I talking mean, about I mean, uh, marijuana like legalization yeah yeah medicinal marijuana Surprised that it's not live free or die my ass yeah, yeah. okay all right, so this is how it started. I, t I sent you a message that said, hey, I was thinking, I know it hurts a lot, but I was thinking, reach out to your peeps, ask them what questions they want answered on the podcast tonight. I will do the same, and if we get enough responses, we can do a back and forth answering questions. And you agreed, so we both kind of shot out a little uh, Facebook and a little social media action, and uh, surprisingly enough, we got a lot of uh, good responses, I thought. What do you think? Couple. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we've never done this before. So we're gonna we're gonna try our hand at uh, answering some of you, the listeners' questions. Um, I've got a few. Ben has got a few. We'll just kind of we'll ask the question, and then uh, we'll do our best to answer it. And um, if you like this format and you find it valuable or entertaining or whatever, uh, and you want to be a part of it, then at the end of the show, I'll give you an opportunity to uh to show you or, or tell you how you can um contact us and uh, send us a question and if you like this we'll do this again at some point in the future and ask and answer your questions so with that said i guess i will ask the first question because having read this i believe this is for you bennett and this one is from sarah from new jersey and she asks uh, she wants to know which which one do you like better, the Army or the Marine Corps, and why? And the reason why I think this is for you is because <laughs> you're the only one of us. That was in the Marine Corps. <laughs> that was in the Army <laughs> and the Marine Corps. I, I, I only served in the Army, so I cannot answer that question. Although I will, I will say that I prefer the Marine Corps uniform <laughs> over that of the Army uniform, but that's the extent of my experience. So, Bennett, answer Sarah's question from New Jersey. What do you like better and why? Well... They're different. So uh, I guess, though, because I here, here's the thing. As a Marine, you're you're always a Marine. Right. Um, yeah. There's no such thing, even even really as like a former Marine. It's really a Marine is always a Marine. You actually can use the title forever. Um, mm -hmm. and, and why can't and why can't you use the title? I mean, forever? you could, but it just doesn't sound as cool. Let's be honest. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You got me. And, and it's actually, um, you know, it's actually uh, uh, congressional. Uh, uh, what do they call those? 
like an order yeah, or whatever. Yeah, like a congressional order that um, once a marine, always a marine. Okay, <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, so, so the so the prestige of having that title for the rest of your life. Okay, I can see yeah, that. Yeah. So it's uh, I so I would say in in the in this day and age and everyone's identifying as something I identify as a Marine. Right. So, but they are different. Uh, they're really different, believe it or not. Uh, at least they were when I served in the Marine Corps. Uh, I, I think with OIF, you know, the new, um, OIF, OEF things got blurred a little bit because mm-hmm. they still, they, they, the army and the Marines st- ran the same type of missions. Right. Um, there wasn't, you know, you took a lot of the amphibious part out of it. Right. And that's one of the things that makes the Marines so unique is, uh, really at the end of the day, they're kind of a special, they're just a special force. Mm-hmm. Um, and a- at least when they're doing their prescribed job per se. Right. Uh, and, and there's just certain things about them where they're, they're, they maintain a level of readiness that, that we didn't in the army. Um, because literally, uh, the executive office, the president can deploy Marines anywhere he wants for up to 90 days. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, that's, that's true for any of the military forces, but I think what makes the Marines, uh, it's, so much, they're, they're, they're so pre, much different. They're prepositioned for them. They're prepositioned, and and um, you don't have. I mean, I'm not saying that Marine Corps don't have vehicles and, and such, but you guys are very quick reactionary. Well, force. we we you are can, a full. I mean, the, when you have the what 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 you call the MAGTAF, so it's the Marine Air Ground Task Force. So with the, we are in a completely integrated force. We have mm-hmm. our own air capability. We have our own, uh, uh, you know, ground. It's it's air and ground mixed together completely, and you know we're integrated with with naval forces as well. So we can hit you from the sea, the land, or the air. And right. It's a complete Marine Corps show. It doesn't have to be anyone else involved. Yeah, but like the yeah. Army doesn't have the same type of air assets. They just don't. They have to call the Air Force. Or the Navy right. or the Marines. So, yep. you know, either way, I guess I guess that's the best way to answer it. And they just train differently. They train to fight a little different. Uh, right. In the Marines, we train to fight at, at a disadvantage, where in the Army, we train to fight as an at an advantage. So do you think, so if we're talking about... Uh, acceptable, acceptable collateral damage in terms of Marine Corps versus the army. Would you say that the Marine Corps has a higher percentage of, uh, acceptable casualties given the nature of, uh, the mission you could be provided? I don't think that there's necessarily a a higher, I I don't know. I I think that, Do, do you know what I mean? I don't even know if I asked that right, but it, but it seems like when the Marines, and of course, my my experience is very limited. But my experience with the Marine Corps is, you know, they, you know, if there's fifty guys and they're told to take the hill, like they'll they'll just charge yeah, at that shit. They'll, they'll and take, take the fucking hill. You know, and there'll be like two people left, and they're like, yeah, we we conquered, we won it. You know, the the army, it's like there's fifty guys, like take the hill. It's like, all right, guys, let's figure out how we can do this with like. Yeah, with the the least amount of casualties possible, like you know, right? It's just yeah. Maybe that's a far. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that definitely used to be the idea. Possibly, <laughs> uh, it's not so much like that now. I would say, okay. but uh, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, I totally understand what you mean. Yeah. Um. So yeah, maybe. Not not saying that one way is better no, or worse. No, it's just I mean, the mentality is a little different. Right. Exactly, and I, I think that. Marines just kind of do, and uh, they don't think about it as much. I think just right, go, right. just go yeah, and do it. Just yeah. do it. Fucking adapt and overcome <laughs> as we go along. So just do it because you know you got sand in your ass anyway, twenty four seven. So just do it. So are we either gonna sit here and twiddle our thumbs, hurry up and wait? There wasn't as much hurry up and wait in the Marines either. Oh boy, the army. Yeah, that's like it's like holy fuck, up. man! I wanted to blow my brains out. 
<laughs> you know. Uh, well, I was an NCO, and it was tough as as an NCO. You got guys, obviously, Joes that work for you, and they they look to you like you've got all the fucking answers, right? It's like, what are we what are we doing? doing Why are like, we I what? really don't know, but you're <laughs> you not going to say I'm, that, right? Right? You can't be like, you know, I don't know. I'm just as pissed off as you are, Joe. But no, you got to right. be like. You know, come up with some crazy thought provoking reason why you're sitting on your ass for four days. But, Shut uh, up yeah. And fucking clean your weapon. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay. So, a lot of people don't know this, but the Marine Corps is actually a uh, department. They fall underneath the Department of the Navy. Correct. The yeah. men's department. The men's department. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thank you. Who was that again? Let me see. Sarah. Sarah? Thank you, Sarah from New Jersey. It's a great question. And uh, I am glad you asked it because I was curious myself. All right. You got the next yeah. one? Bob from Oklahoma wants to know about do-it-yourself website makers and whether or not we've used them and what uh, our experiences have been. So I'm wondering what he – so when he says – website do yourself website makers is he is he talking like squarespace yeah i'm thinking like squarespace wix uh what's the other one wordpress yeah there's there's a whole weebly there's a whole bunch of people yeah yeah one-on-one or one and one or something something like that that. Um, um yeah i'll let you take this one do you have you used any of them no, I actually all of my I've created several websites and many of them are still live uh, out there, and some of them I'm extremely embarrassed about. So, <laughs> so I don't know if I'll tell you the names of, but one of my very first ones that's still up right now you can go and check out. It's a little hokey. It's kind of funny, uh, but it's called um, um, totalultimatemancave.com. Total Ultimate Man Cave. Yeah, total, total ultimate man cave dot <laughs> com. It, it, it was a site that I worked on for a few months just to test out the whole affiliate uh, marketing strategy uh-huh. and website development. And um, there's probably a ton of broken links on there because, like I said, I haven't really touched it in months. But um, so but no, but to answer your question, um, like I've only like, used like, I've only used WordPress right. is all WordPress is all you've used and, and that yeah. that's what your current website is right correct yeah yeah I actually for Warrior Hall uh, have used uh, uh, this uh, Squarespace okay and I like it quite a bit it's really mm-hmm. easy and uh, you know it they're they're quick clean uh, simple websites. More on the mm-hmm. modern side um, than than some of the, all the templates are pretty modern. Um, now, now, have you do you have experience with WordPress as well? Not really, other than the cigars and uh, cigars and sea stories website is WordPress. Yeah. Um, but I, I, all I do is do like editing, like I post on it and stuff. I did okay. build it. I didn't do any of the other stuff with it. So. Yeah, I, I mean, WordPress seems like it could be the best because it's got uh, so many options. The problem yeah. is, is I think you need a little bit more knowledge. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a learning curve to WordPress right. for and sure. Like Squarespace, there is, yeah. there is not really. Uh, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. So with with Squarespace, do you still have like plugins and different uh, like add-ons you can? Yeah, there's with? there's some. I mean, I don't think it's as extensive as Word. Uh, WordPress, but it it definitely does the job. Uh, yep. And uh, I mean, you you have a lot of options, hmm. you know, and whatnot. And then the other the other one that I've used, uh, and I've made more than one website with, is Wix. Uh, okay. I've done free websites with them, which literally you can do whatever you want. You just don't have your own. Uh, you know, you've got a Wix website thing it's like, oh you don't have your own it's domain like, it's like you know you can do whatever like uh simplify success dot wix dot com or whatever i mean it's okay you know but either way at the end of the day especially for landing pages and things like that where right. you're gonna embed that shit into a link anyway right right uh it's free so huh. it doesn't you know what i mean it doesn't right especially for like landing pages and stuff. I I think it's probably a pretty good option. 
Now, when you're using it as a landing page, you still have you still have it with the URL uh, with the Wix in it, or yeah. It... But the thing is, is like if you're if you're uh, yeah, you would. But you, you know what I'm saying when you mm-hmm. when you're like, let's just say you have it, uh, you're putting it out on Facebook or whatever. Um, you would set it up so you you wouldn't even have to see the website or the web. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, people just click on it and you right. just land. And then you just land yeah. there and then they're like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. They're not even looking at, you know. Right. It's, it's not like right. you're saying, hey, yeah, go to, uh, you know, warriorhall.org or cigarscstories.com right. or changerpov.com because you're not going to do it like that because you're just going to be like, yeah, click on this link that's on my website. Right. on my Facebook page and check it out. Now, one of the things that I have is Google Analytics and it allows me to to look at my traffic and you know where people are coming to my site from and how many pages they click through and where they're dropping off. Right. Now, I don't know if do you still have the ability to use like Google Analytics with You these do you do a Squarespace, but I'm yeah. not sure about Wix. At least for the free stuff, I um and I am not positive. I'm I'm sure that you do, especially with the paid one. You you know they've got hosting. Uh, my daughter. I don't know if that's still up or not, though. I'm gonna look at something really quick while we talk. Yeah, yeah. while you're looking for that, I just wanted to let our, all the listeners out there know that uh, neither Bennett nor I um, have any. Uh, affiliation with or or anything with these uh, with Wix or no, or, or, yeah. So I this have is... a website that I made for my daughter called Bows for Paws. It's like a little charity thing that she does where she makes yeah. like duct tape bows and she donates the money to you know stuff. So it's a real simple website, and that was completely made with Wix, and it's pretty cool. It works pretty well. Uh, uh, has she sold anything? Yeah, like? yeah. She sold a bunch of bows. Huh. Um, What's it called? Bows for paws? Bows for paws. Like B O W S. B O W S for F O R paws.com. And uh, it. That's paws, P A W S. Yeah, like the dog. All right. Like the dog, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, so her and I put this together, and. How old is she? She's 10. Well, 11. Okay. Now she's 11. Is she digging it? Yeah. Yeah. So now does she help maintain the actual website? No, or she was like, no. I mean, it's, we don't, we haven't done anything to it. It's just kind yeah. of made it and then forgot it and just put, yeah, it, yeah. and we just put it out there. And every once in a while she'll get like, you know, I think like this past year she, yeah, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, she made like 200 and something bucks for the, for oh, wow. donated. She's donating half of it to, uh, one of the SPCAs or something. She did huh. uh, for one of the SPCAs. And then the other one was for, I want to say, a, a uh, oh, I can't remember which dog, veteran dog uh, charity service. The, the one, one, pa, uh, one pet, one, one vet. One pet, one vet? No. Oh, you know what she actually did? She, she, she donated it to a uh, to Warrior Hall, but, oh, okay. but in in conjunction with we raised money for this uh, army vet who was a uh, uh, she started having seizures and needs a seizure dog, so we raised oh, wow. she had to raise like seven thousand dollars and she gave the money for that part to to her. So that's crazy. Yeah. How do you how do you train a dog to have seizures? Well, to to, it's a. I'm just I'm just kidding, man. Ass. See, <laughs> this is what happens when you get tired. You just start <laughs> start rolling with it. You're like, yeah. So I was gonna figure out how to explain this fucking thing. <laughs> all right, oh, all right. So, well, all right. Next question, <laughs> Oscar. I don't know if this is Oscar the Grouch or or if this yeah. is like Os- Oscar De La Hoya, maybe from Cali. Uh, from Cali wants to know, and, and this is a really good question because I've always wondered this myself, but I was too proud to ask. So now we have Carl or Oscar to thank for this question. 
So Oscar from Cali wants to know, what does yut, yut, yut mean? And and why does the military use crazy words like that? Well, so so everybody knows that I think yut, yut, yut has got to be a, Mar- a Marine Corps thing because I've never heard it in the I Army. I never heard it in the Army either, and I never heard it in the Marine Corps either. So Oh, you didn't? You know. Oh, well, then, I mean, what? there's like the yacht, but I don't. It's not really a Marine Corps. Ugh, <laughs> that's that's a Is that a tough one. Yeah. All right, so I I I have heard Marine Corps uh, uh, Marines say like er. Well, they say oorah. Okay, er, but is er is that like a short a uh, shortened version of oorah? You know, yeah, I guess I guess maybe they. Er, yeah, I, I guess, heard you. Yeah, do it again. The, do it again. Oh, yeah. So I guess I guess it does kind of go to that, but it doesn't mean shit. Uh, no, well, it doesn't mean shit, and it means everything at the same time. Right, it does. So, yeah, yeah, very. But similar. that is, it's, it's, it's you know, oorah is like uh, hua, you know, right. same thing. Are- but when when you do a a yacht, I guess like a yacht, it's more of a you know motivation celebration type thing. It's not a you know, you're yeah, not you're not doing that to like your you know, to acknowledge somebody, you know. Right. Yeah. It's totally you got to really like got a yes drill sergeant like. Yeah. Ooh, uh. So how long do you got to be in the Marine Corps to get that inflection? I don't down know, just, man. Like, I'm. I, I haven't met a whole lot of other guys that do it quite the way I do it. Yeah. But uh, you know. It's very cool. Yeah. I guess. And yeah. So every every branch has their has their own little thing. And it's funny because when I first when I started racing um Spartan races, uh Spartan, if you've never raced anyone out there listening, if you've never raced in, in Spartan race, I highly recommend it. They're all over the country, Canada, the UK, Australia, they're all over the place. And um and they really wanted to make this as militaristic as possible, basically, is kind of the whole gist of it. Um, and, and, um, and they have their own little slogan and it's, it's, um, Aru, A-R-O-O-O. And, you know, so it's, yeah, Aru. So at the beginning of the starting line, they're like, they're like, Aru, Aru. Yeah. They're like, yeah, they do like a countdown. Sound like a bunch of fucking walruses. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like they're, they're kind of taking that off of the, the army's Hua and, and the Marine Corps' Ura. So. And I don't know if the Air Force or Navy have anything like that, do they? Well, the Navy's got hoo Oh, that's right. hoo Okay, yeah, yeah. But I don't think the Air Force has anything. I've never heard it, if they do. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, think they, I was an Air Force civilian for a while, and I didn't hear it at all. And now I live on an Air Force base, and they don't hear it. So I don't uh, know. Uh, nothing. They're, they're, too, they're too busy putting food in their mouth at their awesome dining facilities. That's right. Or living oh. in fucking Shangri-La. So I didn't tell you this. So when we were read when so, okay, so my BR the BRT the unit that I was uh, attached to when we deployed to Iraq BRT stands for Brigade Reconnaissance Troop, and we were the brigade's QRF as well, and we we served a lot of purposes while we were there. So one of our tasks when we first got to Kuwait was we got like these uh, civilian TMP vehicles. Don't ask me what TMP stands for. I'm not entirely sure, but they're like they were like um. They're like the cheap, uh, cheap rundown version of uh, like Land Rovers, um, and we had like I don't know eight of them or something like that. And we ran in these d- different crews and different sections. And part of our mission was when we first got there was to convoy escort the vehicles from Kuwait to the first stop uh, right on the border between Kuwait and Iraq. And it was this uh, a base or this fob called Navistar. And um, so we would basically convoy these guys to Navistar, and then we would turn around and head back down and grab another convoy and just do that back and forth, back and forth, until we got basically the entire division um, north into uh, Baghdad proper. And um, and then we had to do the same thing in reverse on, on our redeployment. We had to come back and do the same thing and, and escort the vehicles back down into Kuwait. Um and there was an Air Force base in Kuwait. And I forget the name of it now, but that was like the only place that that we could like grab, you know, chow and stuff. Right. And so, of course, we're, we we got our like full combat load, like, you know, our Kevlar's, our OTV's. We still got our our tricked out, you know, M4's with our Pac-2's and and um, surefire lights and 
all the you know optics and all the shit that we had on our on our weapons and, and of course you know we had nine mil sidearms and we had you know all kinds of crazy stuff that we were carrying and so my section one day we were like we walked into the the dining facility there the air force dining facility on this air force base and nobody in this air force base you know we're we're walking around with kevlar or nobody had a weapon and so we roll into this thing in this dining facility and it was like i don't know dinner time and it was me and my guys and this i, I don't even know what he was because i'm not familiar with the other branches rank but all i know there was a lot of chevron <laughs> a lot of chevrons in both directions okay right. so, yeah yeah that's that's how they <laughs> and uh the air so there force was, ones oh, are a little hokey but yeah they are yeah but I I was smart enough to I was a staff sergeant and I was smart enough to know that this guy outranked me by a lot. Right. <laughs> and, right. And he came up to me. I mean, and he obviously must have recognized rank because he he made a beeline straight for my ass, and uh, he pulled me outside and just start and he reamed my ass, which was weird to get an ass chewing by an Air Force NCO, but whatever. Right. right. <laughs> and he was like, "What are you thinking, bringing weapons into the dining facility?" And I'm like. I'm like uh, I didn't even know what to call him. I, it wasn't sir. I knew that, but I didn't know what the, <laughs> what the title was. Right. And I'm like, um, uh, uh, I don't even um, know what you are, but yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was like, I, I was like, I I hit the clearing barrels on the on the way in. We're good because now, mind you, this is on our way back. So we just spent a year out on the route. You know, twice. You know, at least a minimum of two times a day, 365 days, seven days a week. Yeah. Like hitting clear bells both ways. I mean, trust me, my, me and my guys knew how to handle a weapon and we knew what was safe and what wasn't. And we were, you know what I mean? Right. He just was, he just freaked out because he probably just wasn't used to look, seeing weapons. Yeah. It chewed my, and I'm like, I'm like, I can't leave him in our vehicle and come in here and eat. Like, you just, you just cause in the military, you cannot leave your right. weapons just oh, like, no, 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 here. No, no. And, uh, you know, and uh, I'm like, what would you like us to do with them? And is the way I, I guess I kind of put it. And he goes, you know, you need to have the weapons outside a dining facility and pull guard. I'm like, Roger, got it. So I went and policed up my guy's weapon and I brought him outside as a good NCO. All a good NCOs would do, let my guys eat first. And um, and once they were done, they came out and somebody grabbed the we my weapon. Oh, and, and I went in and grabbed something to eat. But I just like, how... <clears throat> How asinine! We're in a we're in a combat environment, you know what I mean? Three thousand or however many miles away from home, like this is this is what we this is our job, you know. This we weren't, right. you, know, you know, this wasn't a weekend warrior thing. I mean, this is what we did. Um, it, it was just it blew my mind. Anyway, it got off track. Sorry about that. Oh no, my... I mean like, but like the the Air Force ranks are fucking weird, man. Yeah, they are. Um, I mean they're not. They look weird, but they're not. I mean they're the same. You know, I mean, it's once you got it, you yeah. got it. But like, that's one of the weird things. Like an E5 is a staff sergeant. They're actually yeah. called, that, that's the oh, actual good. rank is a staff. Sergeant. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then the E6, a tech sergeant. Technical or something. sergeant. Yeah. yeah. And, then, yeah. and then you've got two types of master sergeants for E7. You've got master sergeants and then you have master sergeant first sergeants. What? So they have like a little diamond in the middle and they're just more of like the... What what's their title of address though? Master Sergeant First. It can't you would just call him First Sergeant. Oh, okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. And okay. then you've got uh, Senior Master Sergeants, and the same thing with First Sergeants as well. You have a Senior First Sergeant. Oh wow. Uh, and then you've got um, Chief Master Sergeant, and the same thing with First Sergeant as well. And then you have Command um, Chief Master Sergeants. Wow. And it, a little tidbit of information for those of you listening. So like we talked about earlier, how the Marine Corps is a, is part of the Department of the Navy, the Air Force, it, it actually derived from the Army. There used to be back in World War II. The Army Air Corps. And it used to be the Army Air Corps. And it got big, and they realized that it was a mission unto itself, and it peeled off uh, and became its own entity as the Air Force. So the Air Force actually came from the Army Air Corps. Pretty cool. Right. All right, Tom from Cal who's this? Yep. another Cali. Wow. Tom from California wants to know about other veteran podcasts. Who should he listen to? Hmm. 
Well, there's Jesus. only two. Yeah, there's only two. There's only, <laughs> there's two. only two. None <laughs> other exists. Yeah, there's only two. The Changer POV and Cigars and Seat. No, I'm kidding. Uh, there are a lot of podcasts. As a matter of fact, I don't even know if I know all of the no, military podcasts not. There's out there. so many. There are. And there are some that I, I found the other day I was listening to, and there was like, I can't remember the name of it now, but there was like 10 episodes, and it was from back in 2012, and then that was it. Yeah, there, just there, there's, a lot of them that, there's a lot of them that haven't uh, had... You know, I mean, I think a lot of them start and then they realize, oh, my God, you know, this is like real fucking work. Yeah, this is work. Yeah. yeah, we got and, uh, and and maybe they've fallen off. I, and I frankly don't know. You know, I know of a, I know of a few uh, and mm-hmm. I know of a few that I listen to, but there's a lot that I don't as well. Right. So we'll, I guess we'll talk about the ones we do listen to. And uh, I, I will just name a couple and then I'll let you name a couple. But obviously... I, uh, as funny as this may sound, I listen to change your POV podcast, right? Uh, the morning that it goes, I, I schedule my podcast to go live at 4 AM. So by the time I get up for work, I get in the car and I listen to the, the new episode and it's a good thing that I do because the other day on my way to work, <laughs> it was, yeah, that was funny. It was, it was supposed to be episode 17 or something. And, and it was episode was, six. It was episode six. I'm like, oh, shit. I I didn't link it right on my website. So as soon as I got to work, I quickly I, I hopped on the computer real quick. I went and I changed the link. And it, it eventually updated. But so um, I, I do that for just, you know, my own purpose, just to check it out on my way to work. And not only that, but I actually do find it very entertaining listening to our conversations, particularly. <laughs> the Friday banters that you and I do. Yeah. I, I I can listen to those over yeah, and over funny. again. I think they're funny. <laughs> stuff. But that's one I listen to. And then, of course, Cigars and Sea Stories. Um, Which I always and- listen to Cigars and Sea Stories. I do, because we go through the episode once once it's edited and before yeah. it's actually published. Um, I listen to it the day prior to publishing. Uh, okay. Jocelyn sends them out. Yeah, and we. You're not. You're just listening to like the Libsyn link. You're not listening to correct. It actually, pu- yes. Okay. So and, and actually, no, it's not. It's the raw cut. It's it, oh, the raw raw. It's not raw raw. It's it's after it's already been edited, but it's yeah. before it gets uploaded to Libsyn. Okay, so it's basically in an MP4. Correct. Format. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. So that covers those two, the obvious ones. The best, so what the else wicked, by far the best ones. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now necessarily, biased. you know, veteran podcasts, I don't necessarily mean, uh, like I don't, I'm going to name a couple that the host might be a veteran, but yeah. it's not about veterans per se. Uh, okay. like John Lee Dumas, yep. entrepreneur on fire. Uh, he is a veteran. And many, many people don't know that. Right. Uh, many people don't, cause he doesn't tote it around. He, he does a little, I mean, he does bring it up, but you know. Not a ton. Uh, another one that I actually listen to on a pretty regular basis is called The Order of Man. Mm-hmm. Um, and that guy was an army vet. I can't remember his name, frankly, off the top of my head. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Either way, it's called The Order of Man uh, podcast. Then you've got High Speed Low Drag. Yeah. Which is... That's kind of done in conjunction with John Lee Dumas. I think he somehow he's a partner in all of that mm. with uh, the Marine. I can't remember his name. And then a guy named Tom Marcus. They do that too, but I don't know who actually does the podcast uh, per se. Mm. Uh, Dan Evans. Uh, oh, yeah. What is that? The, Dan Dan Better Evans military is military entrepreneur. Yeah, is a mil, military entrepreneur show by Dan Evans. He's a Marine Corps. Yeah, he's actually still active duty. Yep. Um, Brian Chen, what does he do? I know he has a podcast too, but yeah, there's a ton of them. Oh, uh, <laughs> don't forget about Jay. Yeah, veteranology. Um, yep. And that's what I was going for. And then what's Chris's podcast? Which he's not live yet again, is he? Not yet. Not yet. He's relaunching. But uh, his podcast is average to awesome. Average to awesome. 
Yep. So Veteranology with yeah, Veteranology Jay Knight. Good Jay Knight. I like his. I do listen to his, but I'm about two or th- about two weeks behind on his. Like I, yeah, you know. Um, and then I listen to Drinking Bros every once in a while too, which is fairly new on the scene, but most military people know what Drinking Bros is, and if you don't, it's the guys from Article Fifteen. Mm-hmm. clothing and ross patterson who was not a veteran but a very veteran friendly filmmaker and actor so yeah they there's another they one, that one that, too another one i listened to it's uh the pop smoke show oh that, yeah I, you know with, what uh matt pagan yes and i keep forgetting it. i gotta write that down right now i keep wanting to check it out and i keep forgetting to do it so and that. i'm not sure i know he's a veteran i'm not sure uh, if he was a Marine Corps and Army, he was one or the other, I believe. Uh, there's another one that's called um, uh, Veteran and Military News Talk Radio. Yeah, I see uh, that too. Full, full Metal Jacket Media. Uh, they were kind of on a hiatus there for a little while, but they recently came back. I just listened to a new episode by them, but they talk a lot about like um, you know different types of like um, like different weapons out on the market you know tools they do a lot of like product review stuff things like that right. yeah you've got warrior talk radio but i don't really think they're a blog all right a no. podcast i think that's more of a live show uh and there's another one i don't know if you've heard of it um it's called one too many with timothy lawson oh tim lawson i yeah we, we uh we actually uh, we did one of our first interviews on Cigars and Sea Stories was with Tim. Mm, okay, yeah. From, but he was... You know, he, he's got several podcasts Yeah, out he there, used though. to do... Was it Veteran Empire? Did, Something like that. Yeah. that one? yeah. So, I mean, there's a ton of them out there. Um, you know. It's, I mean, even though we're veterans and a lot of the content that we all discuss are military centric. Uh, every show is different in their own, in its own little way. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, it, I mean, it, a lot of it, it's not just content, but it's really the hosts. Like there's some podcasts out there. I'm not, not talking about any of the ones that we just mentioned, but I listen to other podcasts and there's some podcasts out there that have really, really great information, but I just can't stomach like the hosts of the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether it's one host or multiple hosts, yeah. it's like, Oh my God! Just kill some me already. Of them, some of them are pretty like, like Jesus. You know, like yeah. Yeah. Not, it's not good. <laughs> um, actually, one of the things I found that was pretty funny when we were thinking about like, you know, when we first started cigars and sea stories, there's actually this podcast called Submarine Sea Stories. Oh really? Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I can't remember the name, the host's name. I want to say it's Bill, but I can't remember his last name. It's like Bill Nowicki or something like that. Yeah, and I've never Is it still going. I don't know. I've never listened to it, but um, you know, wow. I just found it funny. <laughs> Submarine sea story. So I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, what what happens under the ocean stays under the ocean. So veteran well, on the move. Have you heard that one? Yeah, veteran on the move. Yeah, I got that one. Um, who's the ju- uh? Joe Crane, I think that's the host's name. Again, I've never listened to it though. Yeah, I've, I've listened. And then to I've it. listened to Dysfunctional Veterans Radio a few times. Is uh, that where you just? Is that where you just record yourself talking and then play it back? No, like they. <laughs> the, yes, it, it could be about any one of us for sure, but uh, they they got like three hour episodes. Oh, no way. Like two hours, three hours. Like, like two hours, two and a half hours. Oh, my God. And dysfunctional, I don't know but dis- the, the dysfunctional veterans, like, they do good work. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It's a great organization. Um, I've listened to the podcast twice. Okay. So that's... <laughs> yeah. Wow. It, it was either, yeah, either it was just too long or something. Something, yeah, something. I can't do anything more than an hour. That's why all of our episodes are an hour or less, man. Right, and then command your business. That's the other one that I've listened to on a decent 
basis but there's new ones it seems like coming out every single day there's new ones mm-hmm. it seems like you know um, but not everybody has that that staying power you know what i mean yeah true true all right looks like we've got one more question we'll wrap it up you want to take that one i lost it oh i can no, read you're it. you're popped up over me there so i got it <laughs> because we lost connection so uh, all right yeah Craig from Georgia wants to know which social media platform do you prefer to help promote your small veteran owned company and why? Hmm. Well, that, you know, I've got my own beliefs and take on that. And I'm sure you as well. I I will just say that it, it really depends on you and what your business is and what your, kind of what your threshold is for social media, I guess. And, and I'll explain that in a minute, but for me, hands down my go-to social media platform, it's not the only one I use, but the one that I use the most is Facebook. Yep. Um, one it's because it's, it's, uh, it's, it, so when you're choosing social media platform to promote a business, you really should consider where your audience is. If, for example, Pinterest is very photographic, like it's 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 photography or photo based, right? Uh, photography, it's pictures of sceneries, pictures of products, and if you look at the demographics, I think the ratio of men to women on Pinterest is like almost eighty twenty. Yeah, it's like it's, it's more eighty percent right. women and twenty percent men. You know what? Men. There's a lot of closet dudes on Pinterest. Just oh, there is. Oh, there is. There is. But if you if you're in a business if your business is, um, you know crocheting doilies for you know placeholders for an end table or something, and you're making thousands of those, um, you know one you can take really good pictures of them, but you could do really really good promoting that type of uh, business on on Pinterest. Right. Um, if you are and, and again Twitter. I and again I don't I'm so I'll butcher all these percentages and these numbers. It was just an article that I read that kind of broke down the demographics for each of the social media platforms. And for whatever reason, um Twitter is has got a higher male audience to female audience and and not quite the 80/20 rule. It's not that extreme. Um but there is far more men uh users and 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 followers than women on Twitter and I'm not sure if it's just yeah, because weird. guys yeah guys just want to like you know you got the know. was a I don't, 104 I don't character on Twitter very much yeah I don't either I got no so, time to tweet that shit's like live so you can't right you don't have I mean I guess we do through buffer because we'll use yeah. buffer once in a while but yeah I don't I don't do that not really. So, bu- so buffer is that a program where you load you load up tweets? And yeah, kind of goes like out a, automatically. Like a Hootsuite. <laughs> yeah, Hootsuite. But yeah. We don't really use it that often, um, you know. But I'm the same way. My my well, my two big ones are uh, Facebook and Instagram. Mm. Yeah, and I haven't even messed with Instagram yet either. Yeah, and and that's what I put the majority of our the cigars and sea stories. And then whenever I promote this and all that, it's pretty much all that. That's it. So do you notice do you, do you what kind of return in terms of uh conversion or, I don't know. It's not, uh, from it's not the Instagram. best, but it's, you know, it's something yeah. the way that I look right. at it. It's just anything's better than nothing. Yep. And then what about LinkedIn? And yeah. And then LinkedIn as well. Uh, but I don't do as much promotion on there for cigars and sea stories. as like, I, do myself right uh yeah I, like the cigars and sea stories have like its own profile on linkedin uh or is it just everybody on your team no yeah we profile? all do but then there's actually cigars and sea stories profile there too but oh, okay. uh i post any blog posts that we make i post them on linkedin or i have the guy that wrote it like whether it's tim or mike i have them posted on linkedin as well Right. Um, just to, you know, get some of that cross SEO stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but mainly our big avenue is Facebook. It just, that's just what it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
That's cool. But man. Instagram's good because it's quick. It's quick and easy. You can do, you know, I mean, it's all pictures or you know, short videos. Not yep. a lot of craziness, but it's it's good. And we have a decent amount of followers on there. And and I know you and I are both in Mike Penny as well, starting to Periscope ex- experiment with Periscope a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, more to follow on that. Yeah. I don't know enough about I it. I don't either. Talk. And I see it more as a, when you schedule like a mini webinar type thing, at least that's how I'm going to plan on using it. Right. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of like stuff with it. Um, I still plan on doing like a Cadillac Chronicle type thing with YouTube. Yeah. Uh, yep. But for me, you know, unless you schedule it out, you can't really do that with Periscope because so, unless you get a ton of followers where all of a sudden yeah. you're like, oh, I'm getting jumping on Periscope, you know, right, but right. other than that, <laughs> other than that, you got to like plan it out and, uh, and, and advertise for it basically. Right. What I don't get about it is you do your broadcast, right? And then as soon as your broadcast is over, it's, it's, it's available to re to preview or to watch again yeah. for i think 24 hours something like that i i don't know it, that either but and then it goes away yeah, it's so the it's world. like and, and, so what do you how do you make it so it doesn't go i mean no, you don't is there, you can't that's just it and uh huh. and that's why you've got to get people on it at the time right you know? so so that's why you kind of like hype it up before you do it like you literally could be like, you know, it, a lot of people are starting to use it to do like they're doing like what I guess you would call them like a mini webinar. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then offer, like training. Yeah, yeah. Training and are offering people, you know, uh, you know, give them some valuable stuff and then offer them a, you know, an offer yeah. at the end or whatever. Right. And then or some people are just sitting there eating a fucking sandwich. <laughs> While they watch TV or whatever, you know. And people, yeah, I know. I've seen or, some of those. Or they're, <laughs> or they're, you know what I mean? Or like they're, I, they're, they're sitting there filming their, <laughs> filming their podcast or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. And no, he's done got... that and so has Penny. We we just did that tonight on Cigars and Sea Stories. It was, oh, good. I'm going to go watch it. It's kind of a shit too. show. Uh, well, but, we, but it was, well, it, but it was more of like a, peek behind the veil a peek behind the veil of cigars and sea stories but so we're all we're all of you periscoping at the same time I, yeah i actually did no it was me and mike uh yeah. did and then i was like this is for the fucking birds because there's a delay <laughs> yeah there is so i was like a little bit like, yeah nah, nah nope i'm good so <laughs> i just shut it down and i didn't even watch him or anything i'm like i'm sitting here talking to him watching him talking to him about him and then i hear it again it was, you know, it was like some matrix shit yeah, right but, but you couldn't hear you couldn't hear any of us so it really? was just him because he didn't have like a speaker on or whatever because yeah the way our setup is it would just reverb like a bastard oh it's right like, right so yeah right <laughs> whatever oh man so, yeah, you got to be careful when you're uh, surfing Periscope. The, I, I was just kind of thumbing through, Ooh. check checking out live videos the other day, and you can accidentally stumble across some videos where you where you like you 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 enter the room and you're like, oh shit, I, oh I'm sorry, I don't mean to, you know, yeah. it's like oh, there's hey, some crazy freaky on? shit going I on here. If that people are using it for that kind of crazy shit. I don't know, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> like there's just like sexual predators you know waiting for fucking people like you and i to just like inadvertently fall across their fucking periscope and you go oh hey hold on hey, hey, hey. yeah there's Holy mike right there. how much do i owe Cigars you and sea stories mike in the so if you want to check it out it's actually under uh cigars and sea stories oh the periscope is yeah Oh. So we have our own Cigars and Sea Stories oh, channel. I'm, I don't think I'm following that. I'm following you and Mike, so I'll have to go and grab Cigars and Seas to see that. Yeah, it's a piece of work. All right, I'll definitely check that out. That's cool. And I would put that link in the show notes, but it's going to be gone by the time it's Yeah, exactly. Airs. So, hey, All right. check periodically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. So this was kind of a different episode, huh? What do you think? I like it. It's good. 
It was it was different. Uh, so, it's always good to just bullshit. Yeah. So here here's my little pitch to the listeners out there. If you like this format, you like listening to these questions that were sent in to us today by some list, some of our listeners, um, and you want to be a part of it next time, then you can do that. You can either go to the show notes page for this episode and go to the bottom comment section and leave a your question in the comment section, or you if you would prefer, you could email me directly your question at Eddie at changerpov.com um, and uh, or you could find us on LinkedIn, I mean um, Facebook or wherever. You can go to Facebook Eat Cigars and Seas or, or on uh, Changer POV. I've got the um, I've got the group page. The uh, yeah, the, it's a closed group page, but I'll I'll approve you if you if you want in. It's uh, Changer POV Squad. That's it. That's that's where the community hangs out, and you that's can meet people and ask your questions there. And uh, if we get some more good responses, good questions, we'll throw together another episode uh, answering your questions, things that you are dying to know. And I don't care what type of questions they may be. They could be a question for Bennett, a question for me, or just a general question about entrepreneurship, business, uh, lawyer hall, whatever. You ask it, we'll answer it. It's kind of fun to, to the do best of our knowledge. To the best of our knowledge, yeah. Right, we, we, we can completely bullshit through it. Oh, we, yeah, yeah, we can actually just bullshit our way out of yeah, it. Exactly. Because, uh, you know, we're not subject matter experts in anything by any means, but we've got a little bit of experience in whatever we do now. We'll subject share. matter experts in bullshittery. Bullshittery. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it is. Hey, can you, uh, so I'm going to close out the show, but at the very end, can you give me a, uh, the best Marine Corps? Oh, uh, shit. You got, you can, yeah, you can sure, hurt. sure. Sure, All right. I would go back in the fucking day. Oh, that's kind of funny really quick, though. Really, uh, really yeah. quick story. PLDC, arm, uh-huh. right? I call fucking cadence. All right? Yeah. Marine Corps way, though. Different. Big difference. And I got my ass yelled at so bad. Really? Oh, my God. Did everybody that was marching could Everybody's tell like, the what the fuck? Like, it literally, like, it, uh, oh, it was funny because, you know, there's, you know, in the army, they count and they do all kinds of weird yeah. shit. There's not a lot. And Marines, some motherfuckers will sing, basically, you know? Yeah, it's weird. It's like, I don't know. Right. Right. You know, I mean, it's that's that's how it is. It's crazy. That's great. That is crazy. So anyway. Anyway. All right. Very cool. So. Wow, man. This is just crazy. All right. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Change Your POV podcast. I'm your host, Eddie Lazary. I'm with Bennett Tatton. And I uh, look forward to talking with you next week when I'm not sure what our topic's going to be, but I'm sure it will be a good one. Never miss an episode. Hit subscribe on your podcast player of choice. We have a lot more great content headed your way. And again, if you want to reach out to me directly, you can email me at Eddie at changerpov.com and don't forget if you want your free book your free book by audible.com head on over to audibletrial.com forward slash change your pov pick up your free book and your free 30-day free trial again it's audibletrial.com forward slash change your pov I I need to practice, man. (laughs) All right, dude. Thanks. Peace. Thanks for listening to Change Your POV Podcast with Eddie Lazary. Check out more content by going to changeyourpov.com. And remember, your ability and willingness to change your point of view will open doors of opportunity.